X-ray. In this Bondi vet compilation, the vets reveal their most unconventional treatments. I don't actually know if this is going to work, but everything's worth a crack. From experimental ideas... It's called the dog pod. ...to groundbreaking procedures... I cannot believe that my dog has braces. ...and even makeshift implements. What we do need is kind of a makeshift surgical table. Our Bondi vets are never afraid to think outside the box. This is one hell of a way to get him over his phobia. I'm actually down here for work. I've been told to come down here because someone wants a consultation. They said it can only happen here, can't happen in the clinic, because in the clinic, I won't see the problem, whatever that is. Chris's appointment is with six-year-old Chester. The West Highland Terrier is suffering from a weird phobia. Thanks for coming down, mate. That's all right. Good to see you. Hey, Chester. Hey, yes. yeah. This is Chester. This yes. is Chester. The dog with a problem. The dog mm -hmm. with a problem, absolutely. We've had him as a puppy and he's the most amazing little creature, but there's uh, one major, major issue. And it's kind of ruining his and our lives in Bondi. Here he comes! This is it. This is it. Wow. Oh. There lies his issue. Ooh, that's <laughs> now, that's it. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. Skateboarders. <laughs> Suddenly, this cute little dog has become a monster. He's coming within inches of grabbing those guys' legs and biting them. And the look on his face just says, if I get you, I'm going to tear you to pieces. <laughs> Who rides skateboards? Kids. For kids, exactly. Yeah. So he's aggressive towards kids. Exactly. In a really weird sort of a way, in Chester's mind, there's this imminent danger of the skateboarder attacking them with this really forceful sound. What does he do? Each time he barks at the threat, the threat leaves. He's the hero. I oh, scraped the end of his nail. That just shows you how forcefully he's actually going at those skateboarders. He's yeah, actually exactly. digging those nails in and then he lunges. If Chester does somehow manage to get off that leash and bite the kid, then obviously the kid's going to be hurt. But Mark and Jesse could be sued. And for Chester, it could be as serious as him being put down for that sort of thing. It's a situation that needs a solution. I, I, I hope I've got it. Well, I want is really good audio, really clear audio of those wheels going across that concrete. Next day, Chris is back on the Chester case. He's about to try a left-field idea to cure the terrier's dangerous hatred of skateboards. Chester! It's a massive issue. It's a massive extravaganza when a skateboard goes past. That would be I mean, a little kid scenario. on a skateboard with a parent comes past, he gets the ankle, throws blood. He might get put down. All I need is for you guys to go up here and then skate back. Mix it up, so go pretty close, do a few tricks, really kick it out and actually produce heaps of noise. I've got everything I need. I just hope once I put it all together, it's going to work. Hmm, this is good. To fix an extreme problem, you sometimes need to come up with a fairly extreme and unique solution. It's called the dog pod. It's a collar attached to an underwater iPod and it plays the sounds of skateboarders every few seconds. I reckon that is all right. See if it works. This is where the skateboarders come rushing past and it's a big threat. Yeah. To counter that, I've got something that might surprise you. Chris is ready to unleash his secret weapon. He's hoping it will cure Chester's fanatical hatred of skateboards. Oh. Chester now has his own iPod. That's hilarious. So it sits just outside Chester's ears. He hears the sound of skateboards every few seconds. And no matter how much he whimpers, barks, gets upset, they just keep on coming back. So I'll press play and once it's going, we'll just walk straight away. Yep. It's brilliant. If it works, it's absolutely brilliant. He can hear it, but he doesn't know where it is. Yeah. You can see he's, he's panting, he's yeah. pacing, he's really anxious. This is exactly what I want. Whilst it's not the most pleasant thing for Chester initially, what it's doing is saying to him, no matter what you do, the sound's always going to be there. You just have to learn to live with it. And he will. Mark and Jesse think the tricks have ended with the dog pod. 
Oh no. So whenever you're walking Chester, I want you guys oh, hello. to walk this as well. Okay. I'm going to look slightly silly. <laughs> What I've been working hard to achieve up until now is desensitising Chester to the sound of skateboards. Now, we're going to work on the sight of them. This is one hell of a way to get him over his phobia. It's already not such a big deal. He's not even looking at it. He's not even recognising it at the moment. With the vast majority of behavioural situations, there's no quick fix. The only way you get results is with a lot of hard work. From here on in, it's up to Mark and Jesse to see if they can really turn him around. I did feel slightly silly with it, but I'm going to do it, Chris. If it works, it works. That's all that matters, isn't it? So he's walking along, yeah. minding his own business. He has a look. It's better. It's better. Yeah. It's better. So he's interested, better. but he's not doing that lunging, desperate exactly. dive to exactly. bite. Well, he's not trying to kill anymore. <laughs> Two months later, Chester's skateboard therapy is slowly getting results. But see, that's a big improvement. Yeah, exactly. And he's not cured, but I think he's getting there, you know? Given time. But one more test, though. OK. It's about as large as a test gets. OK, cool. Nothing going on? Chester's reaction, or, or non-reaction, it's great. You're not interested. You want to leave. There's no doubt there's been some rather unorthodox techniques used to help Chester. iPods, walking a skateboard. It's been strange, but today I think we've seen that it has made a difference. Kate is about to make a house call on a very common pet with an uncommon problem. Today I'm seeing a really interesting little patient. He's probably not as furry as the usual patients, however he's still super cute and going to be super interesting. Hi, Hi Dr Kate, how are you? Hi Schnitz. Schnitz was like, what are what you boy? doing at my house Good Dr boy. Kate? I know Talia because I also see her dog, Schnitzel. Oh, you're shaking, but I'm not going to do anything to you today, I promise. What happened is I called her about schnitzel and then the next minute I know she mentions Dougie. Today isn't about schnitty. It's not about schnitty. Because you've got a Dougie problem. We have a fish problem. Dougie, my goldfish, has been lying on his side for about two to three weeks. Will he swim to the top? He has not swum okay. to the top. He's flapping, he's trying. You see a fish on its side, you assume that it's on its way out. It's not pleasant to see Dougie lying on his side, you know, when you have a fish that swims around a lot. The hard thing for me is not knowing if he's in pain. I don't know if he's suffering. What have you done so far in terms of your treatment to date? We cleaned the tank. Yeah. Um, we have minimised how much food we've been giving him. Okay. He's got two little ones. Yeah. Sophie and Redleaf and they seem to be fine. We don't want to see him like this, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Oh, Dougie, you're in such a sorry little state down there, aren't you? What we've probably got here is either a water quality problem or we've got a swim bladder problem. Now, goldfish have this organ called a swim bladder that affects how they float and how they right themselves. And just looking at Dougie, he looks to me like he's, he's probably got something wrong with his swim bladder. When there's not enough air in the swim bladder, it means that they're going to sink. And that could be because there's some kind of a tumour in there. It could be bacteria. It could be because it's blocked. He's a cute little goldfish. And he's a well-loved little goldfish. Yeah. And no matter what happens today, I think that he deserves a little bit of dignity. Okay. It might be that potentially we do have to put him to sleep. Okay. I think we'd be quite upset if he died. Obviously we understand that goldfish can't live forever and you know we, we think at two and a half years we've done pretty well to keep him alive but it'll be sad if he doesn't make it. I'd like to take Dougie with me so I can get an x-ray. How do you x-ray a goldfish? What I'm going to do with Dougie is I'm actually going to put him under an anaesthetic. Okay. So the way that we anaesthetize the fish is that we, we put them in water mm -hmm. with medication in it. So there are a few risks involved in that 
but saying that I think it's worth it. You know, like he deserves a chance. Poor Dougie. So I'm just putting some tank water in here because obviously when we move Dougie, we can't actually put new water in there with him. He needs his tank water. So Dougie, now for the moment of truth. Oh my gosh, he's enormous. I don't know if he's gonna fit in his net. Okay, let's just go like this. You're a giant goldfish. Okay, Douglas, let's get you off to the clinic. Bye guys, have fun without Dougie. Bye Schnitty. See you later, Gator. Bye. I don't know that I can fix him, but what I really think that I need to do for Dougie and for Talia is to give them some kind of prognosis. We're gonna just figure out how much anaesthetic to put in here. Back at the Bondi Veterinary Hospital, Kate's preparing to x-ray Dougie to see if there's a clear anatomical problem that's causing him to sink. So here's the plan. I'm gonna put this anaesthetic in. Yeah. And then we're gonna wait about three minutes. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna get Dougie out super quick and take an x-ray and then put him back in into a clean tank. Okay. It's really important that we get the right amount of anaesthetic to put into the water because obviously if we do too much, we could definitely lose him under anaesthetic. We only have a very small amount of time to do this. We need to get Dougie back into that water as quickly as we possibly can. Just like tight on my finger. X-ray! I'm just looking at Dougie's x-rays now and what I'm seeing is very interesting. This little very important structure filled with air is Dougie's swim bladder, vital in keeping him able to move around freely in his tank. As soon as we look at the x-ray, we can see Dougie's swim bladder is not right. He's only got one of them and he's supposed to have two. And what that means is that he's not able to take in enough air to sustain his buoyancy. He's an unhappy little camper by the looks of it. Dougie's birth defect means that he's at higher risk of swim bladder disease. In goldfish, the swim bladder is actually attached to the esophagus by this really small duct. And when that duct gets blocked, doesn't matter how much air that Dougie's trying to take in at the surface, he can't get enough air into his one swim bladder to sustain his life. That's his dorsal spin here. Give him an injection. Sorry, Dougie. To rule out the possibility that the swim bladder is blocked by infection, Kate gives Dougie a shot of antibiotics. You're okay, Dougie. The second thing I did is I just put a little bit of air into Dougie's esophagus so I can see if I can inflate that swim bladder a little. I don't actually know if this is going to work, but everything's worth a crack. While Kate continues her search for answers, she comes up with an ingenious plan to get Dougie swimming again. This is a packing peanut and it's very useful because it floats. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to attach to Dougie this little peanut to give Dougie a little bit of mobility, or at least that's what I'm hoping it does. So we're just going to have to be quick and coordinated. If I put my finger through Yes, there, that would be yeah. ideal. It's very fiddly. You'd have a sore back if you worked on fish all day, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. oh. So it's not a long-term option, but at least until we figure out how we can fix him, it's going to give him some freedom. I just want him to have a good quality of life. Okay, Douglas, let me just grab the end. Okay. Yep, great. So you can already see, like, Dougie's going to be like a normal fish. He's just got a disability. Oh. <laughs> so cute. <gasps> Look at him go! He's going to love it. Look, he's like a normal goldfish, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute! Not even on your side! So fixed! It's now officially turned into Dougie's life jacket. What I'm hoping is that when he gets home, this little floaty is going to make life so much easier for him. You're looking good, kid. Good job. Before Kate returns Dougie to his tank, she has one more important stop to make. I have this feeling that I think that there's probably going to be something wrong with his water. So what I'm hoping is that you're going to be able to solve the mystery of the water. So you've got enough water here, which is great. So the three things we're going to test for, which is your ammonia, your nitrate and your pH levels. Yep. 
What I suspect has happened here is that we've got one swim bladder which doesn't have enough air in it, but then he's been under stress because of his water. Now, this I can tell from the start is your problem. Okay, nitrate. We're almost heading to... We're, we're in danger, danger territory pretty much. Fish debris, leftover food, it can lead to this pretty quickly. I would suggest doing a fairly large water change. So what's happening is, is that this combination of factors is leading to Dougie being pushed over the edge, literally, and now he's ended up on his side on the bottom of the tank. With the mystery now solved, Dougie is ready to be returned to a pleasantly surprised Talia. Hello Hi. Again. Hi, Hi everybody. I'm back. Hi, Schnitty. Come on in. Guess what? I've got Dougie back. So first things first, we should probably get Dougie back in his tank, right, before we have a chat. Yeah. It's good to have Dougie back. I was not expecting to see him again, so Dr Kate's done an amazing job and hopefully he's on the road to recovery. What's that on his back? This is what I call Dougie's life jacket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it gives him some buoyancy yep. and it obviously takes him up then to the top and it means that he can get around like a normal fish. Look at him go! He's happy, that was like a happy fish. <laughs> He's like having a party in there. I've never seen him like this. Hopefully Dougie's swim bladder will soon recover to the point that he no longer needs his flotation aid. Dougie has gone from a very low maintenance goldfish to a very special needs high maintenance goldfish. I've asked Talia to do quite a lot of things for the next couple of weeks. She's gonna change his water every three days. She's gonna give him an antibiotic bath every single day and she's going to put him on some new food. It looks so cute. It does look very cute. <laughs> We're really excited to have Dougie back in the family home and with Dr Kate's extensive routine, hopefully Dougie will be able to be himself again. Bye guys, bye Schnitty. Thanks, Dr. Bye Dougie, Thanks. bye Charles. Thank you so much. Good luck, if you need me, you know where I am. I think it's a really good lesson in that a lot of the time people don't really know what to do with their goldfish when they see them injured and they don't think about necessarily taking them to their vet. So, you know, shows us vets pretty good at goldfish. There are some calls that are just impossible to ignore and I've had one of those from a girl called Beck who's got a lamb, Oscar, who was attacked by dogs three weeks ago. Chris is in the Adelaide Hills in South Australia. He's had a distressed call from Beck, who opens her heart and her home to animals in need. Hey, lovely to finally meet you. Yeah, hope you found it all right. I did. I'm nice Beck. to meet you, Beck. We're just on a little hobby farm. We're only on 20 acres, and it's basically a retirement village for the unwanted. So where's our boy? Yeah, down in the laundry, down in his new bedroom. <laughs> of course he is. Today, Chris is here to see Beck's latest patient, a lamb that's in serious trouble. Oh, I can hear it. Yeah, Oscar came into our lives as an orphan. He was only a couple of days old, very sick. He didn't have any of his mother's colostrum or anything. He just became my baby very early on. Well, you've been a bit beaten up, haven't you, buddy? Yeah, you agree with that. Three weeks ago, the little orphan suffered a shocking setback when he was mauled by a dog. Until this moment, I've only heard about Oscar and the battle he's been through, but when I actually look at him with my own eyes, it all becomes very real. And it's hard not to be shocked by his appearance. It's probably hard, but can you go back to when he was attacked? I found him curled up next to a water trough. Yep. He was just covered in blood. I would jump the fence and had a look and there's just holes everywhere called Chris, um, my husband, and he rushed him off to the vet. First of all, it was just put his face back together. Then um, we found maggots in his wound, and then his ear died, so that was removed. At least he's alive. We'll try and keep it that way. Beck has now turned to Chris because Oscar seems to be deteriorating. He's just really... I know, sad. I know, it's like he's giving up a little bit. Yeah. You know? Seeing that light going out of his eye, I'm really concerned that he's starting to find it a bit too much. Sorry. 
I just feel sad for him, that's all. I just feel he's been through so much and he doesn't deserve it, so... It's just scary. Hey, so brave. <laughs> Why don't we start at the front? That seems like the logical. Do you want me to hold his face up for you? Yeah, let's let's do that. Do so you can see that open wound there is, is trying to heal. It's doing its best, but as it does, that scab is actually tightening the skin and pulling this lip right down. Yeah. Which means he, he's kind of left with that rather surprised look on his face. 99% of people have said, why haven't you shot him? Straight out. And that it would be kinder on him if I did that. I just can't. He's a member of the family and you don't just do that. He didn't ask for this. This is going to cause him some problems. Just this lip not really meeting the other lip like it should. Yeah. It's going to make eating very hard. It's also going to make drinking nearly impossible because you just can't get that suction and that closure there. Yeah. That's issue number one. We'll move along and obviously got some fairly big wounds along here. Yes. As I'm working my way around the side of Oscar's face, I can't help but notice that these wounds of his, they're still weeping. It's been three weeks since he was attacked. I'd expect they should be healed by now. You know, you, you go around to this side of the body and all of a sudden you look at this area where the ear used to be and it's still a big open wound. The obvious conclusion to draw from these wounds is the fact they're not healing because there's still bacteria present here. And infection is still taking hold of Oscar. For him to heal, he needs to be getting plenty of nutrition in to fuel that whole healing process and to help his immune system and to help that rebuilding that his body needs. Um, so if he's not eating much and if he's not getting that in, then we're starting to build a picture of why he, he's not healing like he should and why yeah. he's not recovering like he should either. Yep. Yeah. Let's have a look here. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but he's got a problem with his jaw somewhere because that's not really sitting the way it should. Okay. As I work my way back, I'm really feeling that jawbone to feel for any irregularities. On the left side, I can get right to the back and Oscar doesn't seem to mind it. Along the right side, it's okay at the front, but when I get to the back, it's a different story. Sorry, little man. And you can see it really doubles him over when I touch there. Now, that is the part of his jaw that he relies on to chew grass because that's where his big molar teeth sit. Yeah. And a fractured jaw is really the only thing that would explain why he's unable to eat, yep. why he's unable to chew, and why he just continues to lose weight. Wow. Can you fix broken jaws? <laughs> now, there might just be a way to allow Oscar to eat where he doesn't have to chew. And there might also be a way that we can stop this jaw from moving and give it a chance to actually start to, to mend itself. Okay. I'm scared, <laughs> what are you gonna say? <laughs> I have no idea. Just give me a moment, and I might be able to round up a few things that, that could just help him. That'd be awesome. Back. I am back, all right. <laughs> I come bearing gifts. Yes. <laughs> as keen as I am to jump straight into my elaborate solution I have in mind, I really have to pull back and focus on the number one problem that's affecting Oscar right now, and that is the potential for infection. First, Chris needs to clean Oscar's wounds with an antiseptic scrub. I think quite like that. And then administer a stronger course of antibiotics. I think we need something that's gonna be a bit more broad spectrum. Yep. Which for sheep treats just about everything that could cause him some problems. Wow, all right. So now the odds are starting to twist in your favour. So I'm pretty sure I'll come up with a way to isolate his jaw, yeah. but still allow him to still eat food. Right. I really don't know what Chris has got planned here. It's going to be interesting. I've got... Of course. A dog muzzle. Of course. So the great thing about this is, what does a muzzle do? It stops the jaw moving from biting. You yeah. can't bite. Yep. So. Now it's in place, yep. you can see that he can still breathe yeah. through those nostrils. And importantly though, it's going to stop that jaw from moving up and down and side to side. This muzzle ticks all the boxes apart from one really big one. 
and that's the fact those straps rub across Oscar's biggest wounds. Now, if they keep on doing that, those scabs are never gonna heal. So, I've got a plan, and this one is a little bit controversial. You ready? <laughs> We're gonna hold that muzzle into place with Velcro. Of course. The Velcro itself needs to be attached to Oscar's skin, and for this, Chris is using super glue. In Oscar's case, this is a perfect way of attaching this Velcro. And there's no worry about it causing any issues because it only needs to stay in place for a couple of months. Once it's done its job, then it will just fall off naturally. That's now feeling nice and firm. Much to Oscar's disapproval, <laughs> the vet just stuck something to my head. I probably wasn't expecting like a mainstream solution necessarily because there is none available. So, hey, if it works, go for it. That's awesome. That's a huge change. As happy as Beck is, I can see that she's still a bit puzzled because all along we've said the important thing for Oscar is the jaw's stable, but he also has to eat. With a muzzle on, surely he can't eat. So we need to find something for him that allows him to eat, but not chew. Yep. And I reckon I've got the perfect thing. <laughs> These are lamb pellets. These are essentially a whole paddock of grass compressed down into small pellets. Pellets soaked in water become a soft gruel. Essentially, Oscar is gonna be on the porridge diet. Now, what we can do is get a syringe. The really great thing about these pellets is they're high in protein, they're higher in fat, and also high in calcium. That's exactly what his body needs right now to get its strength back. He'll get used to that. Yeah. And he's just using his tongue there. He's not having to make big chewing efforts. So it's actually quite simple on him. That's excellent. But there's one other benefit of this. Yeah. It's the fact that because this is so small, once he swallows that, he doesn't actually have to bring it back up to break it down anymore. This can go straight through to the last of his stomach. Of course. It doesn't have to ruminate. It doesn't have to be crushed up, brought back up his throat, chewed more, and then swallowed again. Fantastic. I'm definitely relieved. I, I was starting to feel really quite uncertain, but now it's just, there is a solution. You know, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's, it's just total relief. Total relief. I think things are looking good for the first time in a long time. I think so too. Yeah. I definitely think so too. Hopefully this is, you know, his path to recovery. This is his way to get better. Okay, but I'm going to check back in with you and we'll see how he goes. But there's a lot to be positive about. Thank you. Two weeks later, Chris is making a return visit to the Adelaide Hills to see a very special patient. It's been a few weeks since I first read Oscar the Lamb for the injuries he picked up after being viciously attacked by a pack of dogs. Now, from all reports, he has been gaining some strength, but Beck, his owner, is still concerned about something, and that's why I'm heading there now. So where is he? He's just in here, in a little cubby house. He's, he's locked away from predators in here. I can hear it. Hello, Oscar. I think Chris is going to be really surprised when he sees Oscar again. Hello, buddy. I've been wondering how you're going. He's got his condition back. He's got that sparkle in his eye. He's that sassy little boy again. Wow. He's put on some weight. He has. Yeah, we could feel the bones underneath him before. He's obviously been shorn since, but yes. just across this back line here, he's actually carrying some, some fat, which he never had before. The biggest test as to how well Oscar's progressed has to be from how his jaw feels. Let's have a little look. Okay. Undo your Velcro there. Get the muzzle off. Okay, so obviously he had that fracture just at the base Yep. of his mandible here. Yes. And I remember when I touched there, he really buckled over and, and almost fell down on the spot. He did. So we don't see that same reaction now, which is, which is great. Fantastic. It's still too soon for the bone to be healed properly. Okay. So what it says is that we're on the right track. There are some really positive signs here, and it's clear that Oscar has progressed, but at the same time, it has not been a complete recovery. All right. He looks great, but you're still concerned about something, right? Yeah, his lip is worse as he's healing. It seems to be pulling down more. As soon as the muzzle's off, it's just gaping. Yeah, so he's kind of got that consistently grim look on his face, as in? Yes, you can see all his bottom teeth. You can see right into his mouth. 
um, and it's gaping more and more every day. He can't drink properly, he can't eat properly. It's affecting his quality of life. Whilst those, those scabs there shrinking down is a good thing here, unfortunately yeah. under here when it's happened, yep. with those wounds there and, and across his, his chin there, when that's happened and the, the skin's shrunken and, and tightened up, it's pulled that lip down. Yeah. An exposed lip like this is really going to be a magnet for flies that want to come in and lay their eggs there. Once they do that, maggots will develop and then Oscar's lip could become fly blown. From there, it could be life threatening. Just going to have a play around his mouth and just see what we need to do. I really hope Chris can do something with Oscar today. I don't have very high hopes because it's pretty bad. Mind you though, Chris has pulled something out the hat last time so nothing would surprise me. We want to get those lips actually coming back together. Yeah. But there's a bit of tension there when I do push up. It feels like it, it's a real effort to get that skin to, to actually meet up with the top lip. Yeah. So we kind of need to do two things. We need to relieve that tension yeah. from that scar. But also we need to, to stretch this lip back up yeah. and, and put it into its proper place. Okay. Quite seriously, Beck, what he needs is is a facelift. Wow. And if it's all right with you, I would like to do it now. Let's go. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. So Oscar, one more little procedure. You got it in you? Yeah? All right, buddy. So brave. So brave. <laughs> Guess he's been through a lot. Yes. Okay. What we do need is kind of a makeshift surgical table. I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you have something like a picnic rug that we can just put over this straw here? I do. Yeah? Yeah. That'd, That'd be great. Be. And maybe a bowl of water as well. I can do that. All right. All right Thank then. you. This is going to be a facelift with serious medical benefits for Oscar, but it's not going to be straightforward. We've got to fight against all that yeah. scar tissue yeah. that's pulling that lip downwards. Is this good enough? Perfect. Once I get in there, I've got to loosen that up and push that lip upwards. Hi. You're a mama's boy. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's certainly relaxing. His, his heart rate's slowing down. And okay. As you can see, he's very keen to lie down there. Considering everything that Oscar's been through already, the last thing I want him to experience today is pain. That's why I'm giving him a sedation, plus some local anaesthetic injected around our surgical site. How you doing, buddy? So I'm just gonna clean up the area where we're gonna make these incisions, and then we'll get started. Even though I'm operating in a paddock, the same rules as a normal surgical theater apply. I have to make sure this surgery is as sterile as possible. Okay, perfect. Righto, we'll make our first cut. Okay. So we've got our V-shaped cut there. Now, I'm just gonna go underneath that incision. Okay. And work my way underneath the skin just to try to free up some extra loose skin there. Okay. Problem goes, there's so much blood supply there from the healing that. Oh, okay. That's why it's gonna bleed a lot more than it probably normally would. Yep. As I push those scissors underneath the scar, it's clear this is where our problem lies. It's almost impossible for me to drive those scissors through the scar tissue and free up this space. It's really quite tough in there. I can feel it. Yeah, so that's what we're really battling against. So all we need to do now is just stitch this so space back, back together. Yep. Oh my good. Excellent, all right. Right, well, got the last stitch done. Wow, looking <laughs> handsome. You're looking pretty good, Oscar, I gotta say. Oscar looks like his old self. Even though he has one ear, he looks almost as good as you. There's no reason that he now can't live a normal life. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Oscar, you must ready to stand up? Yeah? You ready? You up? Up again. There we go. You drink already. We'll test it out. 
Where are you going? After all the setbacks in Oscar's life, it finally feels like he's back on track. And you get the clear impression he does not want to waste a moment more. Why wait to get on with the rest of your life, huh? <laughs> this is the Oscar that I know. He's back. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Thank you. Come on, Bubba. Let's go. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Alana is arriving with seven-month-old Kelly. We noticed that she had some little holes um, in the top of her mouth. Um, there's a bit of blood around them. So I really have no clue what's going on or, or what she's done, but it looks like it might be something to worry about. I'm going to fix your mouth. Yeah, we'll make you all better. Callie is definitely my little baby. Um, she's spoiled beyond belief. <laughs> so I want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with her. So what's happening? She likes to chew lots of things. Yeah. She's always chewing sticks yeah. and rocks and that. Um, but I'm not sure if she's punctured something or got like a hole from okay. chewing on something. Sure. Okay. I'm just going to have a look in her mouth and see if we can work out exactly what's causing this problem. Oh, it doesn't look good. It's only when I open up her mouth that I notice that her canine teeth are sitting far back and they're actually digging their way up into her palate and that's not normal at all. Those bottom canine teeth, they're actually not sitting where they should be and what they're doing is they're burrowing up into her palate mm -hmm. and they're making those little ulcers and if we don't do anything about it those canine teeth will just progressively burrow through her palate uh, and eventually in the worst case scenario they can almost make holes right up into her nasal cavity. That's pretty, pretty bad. Yeah it's pretty serious if we get to that stage. The best thing we can do is try and treat her now so that it's not going to progress and end up with a serious surgical problem. If we don't treat it, it's going to cause her lifelong pain, discomfort, difficulty eating. It's something we really need to treat straight away. It's OK. Mm. She's just a little baby, so I want to make sure we can do whatever we can to, to help her. Hi, this is Kelly. <gasps> Hi, Kelly. And Alana. Hello. <laughs> Alana noticed that she had some little craters on her top palate. Lisa is hoping specialist veterinary dentist Nadine Fiani can find a solution to help the staffy. It seems like her lower canines are not occluding in the way that they should. Oh, They're goodness. just not lining up. But I'd love your opinion on what we can do. Let's have a look inside. Let's open up that little mouth. Wow. You see the dents right in the roof of her mouth? That certainly does not look right at all. Wow. So this this is a, it's a pretty nasty problem. You're absolutely right, Lisa. The first thing I could see was that her two lower canines, her big fang teeth, instead of sitting in this sort of angle, they're actually sitting a little too upright. They're standing up. And what that means is when Callie closes her mouth, those two fang teeth are now poking up into the roof of her mouth and they're causing dents. They're causing indentations or trauma to the roof of her mouth. Is there something we can do to, to help her? She's very lucky. I think we can probably put on some doggy braces. Um, <laughs> doggy braces, sure. I did not think that they were going to say that she needed braces. I'd never, ever heard of a dog with braces. So is it like human braces? Or? They're, they're a little bit similar to what people can have sometimes on their teeth. We're going to move her upper canines back. And once there's a bit more room, we'll try and shift the problematic lower canines out of the way so that she's not having that painful problem anymore. We're not trying to make her win a beauty contest, we just want her to be comfortable. Yeah, I don't want her to be in pain, so. Oh, that's good. She's the most loved member of our family, so anything that she needs, I will do for her. Kelly will be a pioneer and one of the first dogs ever to have braces fitted at Sash. Kelly's provided us the perfect Absolutely. case for it. And the beauty of, of this procedure is that it's mm. completely non-invasive. As horrible as Callie's problem is, the exciting thing is we can put braces on her to fix this. Hey, you're going to get braces on very braces soon. On Stage one of Callie's orthodontic treatment will take place later this afternoon. For now, it's time for Alana to say her goodbyes. We'll see you soon. It is pretty amazing that we can do this for her. I'm sure some people are going to think I've lost my mind putting braces on my dog. 
um, and they might sort of think I'm just doing it so they look pretty, but we're going to do this so she isn't in any pain anymore. <laughs> All right, sweetheart, I'm going to go to sleep. If we were to leave Callie's mouth as it is, it's only going to get worse. And what will happen is those two lower canines, those two lower fangs, are just going to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper into the roof of her mouth. Wow, it's quite the hole. What we're looking at here are, is the trauma that's happening in Callie's mouth. So these two dents in the roof of her mouth are caused by the uh, lower canine. Every time she closes her mouth, they poke straight into the roof of her mouth. So that's really uncomfortable. So our aim is to eventually be able to move these two canines outward so that they're sitting on the side of her jaw rather than inside the roof of her mouth. The first step today is applying braces. We're going to cement on some metal buttons onto her teeth. It's a very delicate procedure, and where they go is, is very, very important. We just need to let that sit for a minute. The buttons will hold elastics that will start moving the problem teeth to their correct position. We have to be very, very careful with how much tension we apply to these teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we put too much tension, if we try and move that tooth too, too quickly, it could end up killing it, and that's not what we want. That could lead to a whole host of problems. So we have to take our time, we have to measure everything, and we have to make sure what we're doing is spot on. There we go. Perfect. Stage one of this long and complicated process is now over. I think the, the buttons and the chains look great. They, they don't feel like they're gonna come off, but she is a puppy and we have to be so careful with her so she's not allowed to chew on anything because they, they can come off quite easily. Oh, it's all right. Callie will sleep off her sedation and hopefully be able to go home with her owner, Alana, later today. Kelly has recovered from her anaesthetic after having a set of doggy braces fitted. Come on. Specialist veterinary dentist Nadine has given her the all clear to go home with owner Alana. That's your mommy coming to get you. Callie is doing amazingly well this afternoon. You wouldn't even imagine that she was anaesthetized only a couple of hours ago. She's right out of that anaesthetic, no problems at all. Oh my goodness. So much for sedation. <laughs> I cannot believe that my dog has braces. I think it is so funny, but hopefully that really, really helps her. So I'm pretty excited. Hello. 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 <laughs> You're beautiful. Kelly's next visit will be in four weeks. Oh, thank you for that. That was lovely. I really do hope that we start seeing that upper canine tooth, that upper fang tooth, start to move back gradually and to do so in a slow and steady fashion and that we don't end up with any complications from it. Bye, good luck. <laughs>The next step is to use dental putty to construct a temporary plate that will start pushing Kelly's lower canines clear of the roof of her mouth. We want to make sure that everything fits together and that we shift the teeth as quickly and as efficiently as possible without causing any problems later on. Little Callie is now more than halfway through the pioneering program to correct her teeth. Yes, that's very, very nice. It will be another four weeks before she's back in to see if the plate has worked. Now we'll just have to wait and see if the teeth shift like they should be. There you go, Callie. 
Today is a huge milestone for courageous Kelly. You're a good girl. After weeks of intense treatment at SASH, the staffy pup is back for what's hopefully her final procedure. We're going to be removing her orthodontic appliance today um, and hopefully that'll be it, we'll be done. That's a good girl. The first step is removing Kelly's plate. We're going to score the appliance itself and then we're actually going to crack it off bit by bit. We do that very carefully because we don't want to hurt the teeth underneath it. Today's the big day. Kelly is having her plate removed. So excited to see how it turns out. Oh, there we go. The whole lot just came off. Thank you. Fantastic. So we'll just get the last bits and pieces off. We are going to just make sure that everything's fitting together OK. There we go. I'm always nervous at this part of the, the procedure because it's really the, the moment of truth to see if all, all the work that we've done has actually been successful. So, fingers crossed, our teeth fit together properly. Oh, beautiful. So we can see immediately that now her lower canines are on the outside of her upper canines, which they weren't before. Previously, they were just sitting right in there inside her palate, inside the roof of her mouth, and they were causing all manner of trauma. So that's no longer the case. The braces, the plate, everything has done its work. Our lower canines are now in completely the right spot. So they're not going to poke through the roof of her mouth. But most importantly, she'll be very, very comfortable. Isn't she the prettiest girl now? You're so pretty. Lovely teeth that don't hurt. Kelly. Mm. You're going home, sweetheart. You're going home. Come on, somebody's waiting for you. I know. Later that afternoon, Callie has slept off her sedation and is ready to be reunited with her devoted owner, Alana. I can't wait for Alana to see Callie's new smile. They have been through weeks and weeks of procedures and her devotion and dedication to her dog is quite remarkable. I just can't wait for her to see her little girl at the end of the day. She is going to be so excited. Go, 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 go. Hello, Mama. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello, princess. Hello. Kelly. Kelly. Come on. Come on. Show your teeth. Show me. Oh, look how pretty they are. Oh, Baba. Got a brand new smile. <laughs> Thank huh? you so much. My pleasure. It's really exciting to have been involved with Kelly's treatment. She's now gone from a dog that had a painful mouth to one that's got a beautiful, normal functioning mouth and she'll go on and lead a happy, healthy life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Come you. Come on, Papa. See you, Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. She thinks your teeth are beautiful. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. It was definitely worth getting the puppy braces for Kelly. Um, we can be happy knowing that she's got a long, happy, healthy life ahead of her with plenty of love from all of us. Good boy. I'm ready for your surgery. At the Hertfordshire campus of the RVC, it is the moment of truth for nine-year-old Otis. All a bit worrying, isn't it? Today, neurosurgeon Patrick Kenny will drill through Otis's mouth into his skull to remove the tumour on his pituitary gland. It's encouraging, isn't it, Otis? Oh, good news. The RVC was the first veterinary hospital in the UK to pioneer this radical operation. So this is a 3D reconstruction of Otis's head in green. There, that's his tumour. This tumour on the so-called master gland causes Otis to overproduce growth hormone, resulting in his severe case of diabetes. It's right near the base of the brain where lots of nerves, like the, the optic nerves or the nerves that allow vision to occur, go into the brain. So where a lot of the arteries that supply the brain's blood supply are. So there's certainly a risk of damage to those. So it's a, it's a, it's a difficult spot to get to. That bit's going to be fine. If you can get that bit of hair off there and maybe the leading edge. The benefits are almost miraculous, but the risk is profound. 
We have unfortunately had some animals die after the procedure, most of them because of strokes, we think. Uh, but that's about 10 or 15% of the cases that we've seen here. For Otis's owner, Richard, there was little choice. I know you're missing him. Otis had been given just one year to live. Otis and his friends mean everything to me. I know that there's a chance that he could never come home. And then the thought of maybe never seeing him again is devastating. But I knew it had to be done. Otherwise, I'd never forgive myself for not trying to help him. I know you're missing him. He's going to be fine. I know he's strong. Best of luck. We'll see you on the other side. He's pretty much in the frame now. We just need to position him with his, his mouth pretty much wide open so we can get to the skull base. It all looks pretty gruesome. Otis can't feel any of this at the moment, but it's, it's really given the, the size of the target we're hitting and all the important structures around it, like the nerves to the eyes and um, the blood supply to the brain. It's, it's, it's really important that he doesn't move around too much, even a few millimetres, so hence the setup. If he moves even a millimetre, that could potentially make the surgery a failure rather than a success. While Otis is oblivious to what's going on, his owner Richard is not so lucky. It's torturous waiting, knowing he's under the knife at the moment and not sure if he's going to pull through afterwards. For the last nine years, he's had a nice life. Hopefully there's another nine years left in him. just gone in through the mouth and exposed the base of Otis's skull. So it's weird. I think I'm just under where the tumour is highlighted in the way over there, um, just under that point. So I need to drill about a five millimetre diameter hole just sort of right under it. There's a lot of nerves and, and arteries and veins right around that five millimetre tumour that we need to avoid. I guess this is the bit that no, no one bumped the table or make any Two sub movements. Patrick has now successfully drilled through the bone at the base of the skull. So I'm going to start removing the tumour now. It's like a very, 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 very careful game of hungry, hungry hippos. It's just patiently taking small amounts of tumour out. That's the last of it. The tumour has been successfully removed, but Otis is not in the clear yet. I think the first 24 hours, and particularly the first six hours after the procedure, really are critical. But um, so far, so good, and, and hopefully uh, things keep going smoothly. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's feeling a bit odd, hey? It's been one week since Otis's cutting-edge brain surgery, and Richard has finally been allowed to come in for a visit at the RVC. I missed him loads. It's been really weird at home, very quiet. His two sisters are very quiet as well, upset, worried where he is. Hello. There's Otis. <laughs> Here you go. He does have a complimentary new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stein Neeson has been in charge of Otis's post-operative care. Did you uh, expect him to be so bright after such yeah. a big operation? So happy that he's managed to come through the surgery. There were obviously a lot of risks. Really worried, but he's a strong cat. I knew he'd be able to do it. Oh, he's loving that. <laughs> Seven days after brain surgery and lying on your back and enjoying the cuddles from your daddy. One of the risks was that he might have a new personality or forget things, things like that, so that was always scary. But today, he obviously knew exactly who I was, which is great. Back to Otis Cuddles again. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. It's a big procedure, but our cats are so strong, they bounce back uh, often quite, quite well. If things go right, you know, you can get a marvelous result. And it is great to see the joy in Richard's eyes and the joy that we share as a team. He has been uh, understandably a little bit nervous about this whole procedure, and therefore the relief is very great that things are going the right way. Oh. Otis is already requiring far less insulin, 
and the signs are good that one day he may be completely free of diabetes. Really happy to know that his diabetes is going down, to know that it might be disappearing. It's definitely a miracle for him. He looks so much happier despite his haircut. Yes, it's a small <laughs> price to pay for getting rid of your brain tumor, I would say. Definitely. <laughs> and potentially getting rid of your diabetes as well. Otis will stay in hospital for a few more days until he's strong enough to go home. Otis, <laughs> come on, you can do it. There you go. He'll go <laughs> home soon, but yeah. in the meantime, you can uh, look at that. Cool, thank you. <laughs> Time for the last cuddles. It feels so great to be bringing him home after not having him for two weeks and him being poorly for over six months has been horrendous. Here you go, Otis. After how bad it got and how frail he had become and the brain tumour was just really scary and to see that he's now totally recovered is amazing. I can't believe it's happened. Glad to be back. Yeah. The operation has been a total success. He's totally back to normal, back to being sprightly. It's just as if the diabetes and the brain tumour never happened. And that's the best outcome we could have had. Otis! Otis! What are you doing, you cheeky cat? <laughs> the surgeons are amazing and it's them who I thank for his life. Oh, Otis. Glad to see you're back to normal. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com, and you can do so via the link in the description.